Hello YouTube. This is Off Grid Amateur Plus. I'm making this video for all of those amicus smokeless fire pit enthusiasts out there that wonder uh, why I use rivets instead of welding my connections. And the reason why that I use rivets and put gloves on here is I got two pieces of metal here. I've pre-drilled some holes in it, clamped it together. But this, this metal has coatings. There's paint on the outside and, and paint on the inside. Um, and the coating that makes it food grade. But uh, in order for, to, for me to have a really strong spot weld, uh, this has to be bare metal. And that isn't really something that's feasible in terms of how long it would take to clean that base metal just to get a decent spot weld. So I went with rivets because rivets uh, have a shear strength. You see these two sheets of metal joints together here. Uh, they will, pulling straight out separation, one rivet can hold uh, 250 plus pounds. That's what they're rated for. And then the separation this way, pulling apart, is about 1,200 pounds of tensile strength. I've got two methods for, for connecting these rivets. I'm gonna, using these uh, Aero rivets right here, that's the brand, Aero. Um, readily available. And then these rivets just go through the hole that I drilled, just like that. Okay, so once you, uh, once you insert it through the hole that you drilled, uh, and you secure this rivet, this mandrel, this pin will pop out, and what will be left over is the rivet itself that's expanded on both sides. It has a, uh, a washer type finish on one side, and it will expand and deform that metal on the other side to bond these two pieces together. So the least expensive option, of course, is a handheld riveting tool. And this riveting tool, you have to insert it and you give it a few pumps. There's one pump. You can see that the, the metal is starting to deform a little bit. And this is uh, kind of cumbersome to do with one hand, but then you pump it again and it, uh, it's going to deform even more, as you can see. And then one more pump should be enough to cause it to pop. That's why they're called pop rivets. All right, so that is now deformed and has bonded these two pieces of sheet metal together. Um, and as you can see, I'm gonna glove up for this because I, you know, it's sheet metal. So you gotta be smart about it. But uh, that bond right there, you can still pivot it and rotate it, but they're, they're, they're tight together. But we're talking about a shear strength, pulling apart across this way. We're talking about uh, 250 pounds of, of force would take to snap that. Uh, I do use uh, steel rivets, they're not aluminum. Recently somebody asked me how the rivets hold up under the heat of the fire. Uh, and aluminum rivets have a melting point of 1225 degrees. Most aluminums do. So I have had aluminum rivets in the past, just some prototypes, deform a little bit. And when they uh, deform it weakens them and there's a good chance that they could come apart. So eighth inch steel rivet, 250 pounds of shear strength, 1200 pounds of tensile strength. Okay, uh, the other method for joining these two together, uh, let's grab another rivet and pop it through here. Okay, so that's inserted. And uh, I've acquired this tool right here. It's the Milwaukee uh, riveting tool. And you just pull the button, squeeze the trigger, you can hear it cycling. It's a lot faster and it gives me a more uniform pull, uh, less moving around. And this thing doesn't always grip on the first pull, so. Oh, there it is, first pull. Snaps right off real quick, real easy. Makes a nice uniform uh, stroke on that mandrel and draws these two pieces of metal together. And, and again, I could use spot welds, but that would require clean base metal. But if you're concerned at all about whether or not this has the strength to, uh, to hold the entire assembly together, um, these rivets, like I said, they're steel, so they're not going to melt uh, any more than the, the steel, the sheet metal would melt uh, under those temperatures of 1200 plus degrees once that secondary combustion kicks in. 
Uh, but these two rivets together right here have a holding strength combined of 500 pounds. And each one of the Amicus smokeless fire pits uh, have close to 50, about 50 rivets all together um, holding the, the sheet metal together. But uh, this is my, uh, one of my assembly areas inside a shed that I have, a uh, workbench, hanging up all these tools to make this happen uh, in terms of cutting up these drums and, and using as much of the available material as I can. And I hope this answers some people's questions about why I use rivets instead of uh, spot welds. You know, uh, with a spot weld, there's no way to guarantee the integrity of that bond. Uh, with these, I can visually inspect each one of these rivets to make sure they've fully bonded these two pieces of sheet metal together. Um, another thing is that uh, when something heats up like that from, from ambient temperature, like 1200 degrees, there's a lot of expansion and contraction that happens. And, and round is a great way to expand and contract um, because it, it expands and contracts evenly. Uh, some of the fire pits that are on the market are square and they have flat panels of steel in them. And that steel is gonna warp. Um, if there's any welds in it, they might crack uh, when they get up to temperatures like that. Uh, but uh, pressure vessels like air compressor tanks, they're round for a reason because they expand and contract and handle that pressure better. Um, the same thing goes for your uh, propane tanks. Those things are round for a reason because structurally they can handle that expansion and contraction. Uh, and they spread it out more evenly. So a round fire pit is going to give you that, that expansion and contraction more evenly. But when that happens, this, these uh, rivets have a, um, the ability to just move and allow that metal to expand and contract. There's just a, a tiny little bit of flexion in them. And uh, a weld typically doesn't have um, that flexibility. It's, it's sung to the tune of um, it's strong enough to bend like the palm trees, you know, they, they withstand hurricane force winds because they're strong enough to bend. Um, certain types of trees up here in the northern part of the country, you know, they get hit with uh, strong straight line winds, they just snap because they're not strong enough to bend. And uh, welds, you know, if enough force is applied to it and it's not a quality weld, and there's really no way to expect it, inspect it as, unless you're gonna x-ray it to make sure that there's good base metal breakdown and penetration, um, they can snap, you know, they'll crack. And uh, with spot weld, there's really no way for me to inspect that. So rivets, it just made more sense. Um, if this were bare metal, then I would say, yeah, let's just spot weld it because bare metal is gonna have a, a good strong bond and it's gonna be faster. It's gonna be faster for me to construct it. But using these rivets allows me to, um, to construct these and have the ability to visually inspect them. And also I try to make sure that this nice finished side is what's exposed on the parts you can see. These are called blind rivets. This, this fat part that, that uh, gets deformed, that makes the bond, um, that is hidden inside areas where you can't see. To try to keep those hidden. Um, but I hope this gives you some insight, a little more uh, peace of mind about your, uh, your fire pit. Uh, to make sure that it's going to structurally be able to handle um, uh, the the extreme temperature changes and when you're picking it up and carrying don't worry about breaking it you're not going to break it because um, the, these rivets have the ability to, to take it okay anyway if you have any more questions about why i use rivets um, put it in the comments section be happy to answer it and don't forget to click on that uh, like and subscribe button there um, every time you do, these things move up a little further in the uh, results when people do searches. Thank you very much, and they all have a lovely day.